Josh Bench. Um, I'm from here in Iva, and I've been the chief for about a month officially now. Now, growing up here, did you think one day I'll be a police chief of Iva? I always hoped that maybe one day. Um, it goes back to a long time ago. My uncle uh, worked the Anderson City Police Department and then the Anderson County Sheriff's Office. What retired was his name? Keith Smith. He retired with uh, 47 years. And so I've always had that law enforcement love from being little and seeing his patrol car. But the thing that sold me here growing up, always being here, um, Jimmy Ray Sutherland, who was the chief for years, drove by my house every day to wave at me. And I always thought it'd be really neat to, you know, be able to do that one day and never imagined, but here we are. Well, how did you get here? What, what did you do before you came here? So I've worked for the town for 10 years. Um, I started as the clerk of court for the town, was able to become the assistant clerk um, to Mr. Taylor, moved up, became an officer, uh, started with code enforcement, things like that, and moved up into being an officer. I was an SRO um, for a year at Iowa Elementary School. I loved it, never thought I'd do anything different, and next thing you know, here I am. So I've been here uh, my entire career. So. Well, people who don't know much about the police department here, tell them how many people do y'all have? Tell me how, how much do y'all have to patrol? Tell people kind of what y'all have to do here on a daily basis. Okay, so uh, fully staffed, we have 10 officers when we're fully staffed. Um, we have five SROs in the schools in Anderson District 3. We have a really good working relationship with them. And so an officer in each one of their schools. Um, then we have officers that work the road here. We have a couple of part-time and reserve officers who work with us too. Um, we have the town's growing, so the town's annexing and getting old, getting bigger than what the people that have been around here for a long time um, are used to. So we are growing in that aspect. And what are the challenges for y'all as y'all grow? The growth is dealing with more diverse people. Used to, you go on a call and you've been dealing with them for years so you know who they are and now you're meeting people you start talking to them where are you from well, i'm from upstate new york or i'm from oregon or california and you're just like how in the world did you get to iva and uh but it's i think it's going well as far as uh adjusting to that and the things we deal with in that aspect what 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 are the kind of what are the most common crimes and the most common things y'all calls y'all get here in iva our most common cause an animal complaint that would be the most common thing that we deal with, um, but probably domestics. Um, we we have several domestics here. Generally, you get out there and there's not really an actual domestic or anything like that, but um, that would be, I would say, our busiest calls or animal complaints and domestics. Well, both of those are pretty dangerous, right? They can be. Um, a lot of times, an animal complaint, you never know what you're gonna deal with. We've been out to where it's just something Simple, you know, I saw a dog running down the road to um, a couple of weeks ago, had someone actively being chased by a dog. And so then we had to deal with that situation. Um, domestics, of course, they're always, you never know what you're going into. And so those are always a, one of those calls that you deal with that you have to be a little more on guard than um, some of the things we do, so. How is growing up here giving you an advantage of kind of knowing what all is going on as you, you know, patrol and lead the police department? Well, growing up here, um, you know a lot of people because although the town is growing, there's still your core people that have been here. I've known since I was little and then I've had the privilege of growing up and knowing them and then you know their families. Um, so a lot of times when we deal with these different incidents, you know, going in, You'll, they'll say, this is, you know, this is the description of the person. Well, I've been here and it's like, okay, I know who you're talking about. Um, so we've had that. Um, but it's also beneficial even when you're not dealing with a crime or anything like that. You walk into a store or restaurant and, hey, how are you doing? It's good to see you. How's your mom doing? How's, how's your dad? How, all that stuff. That's, that's the thing I think I enjoy the most is growing up here, knowing these people, you know their stories, you know a lot about them, so. Well, there's a lot of, of effort now to have community engagement with law enforcement. Mm -hmm. I guess that's kind of built in since you're from here and you know that. Yes, sir. So um, we are big on that. We like to do our business checks, our neighborhood checks and stuff like that. And what I do like is a, um, 
good bit of our road patrol officers actually are from here or they live here. And so that's been a big help. And, you know, they'll call up here and ask for them by first name or you'll be riding through a neighborhood and they'll say, hey, make sure you tell this officer that uh, what they asked me about the other day, I know the answer, tell them to come back by. And so I think that being in that aspect from being here to a lot of us have grown up around it, um, I think it's been a huge benefit for our department and being, you know, from the community. And what kind of feedback have you gotten from the people who knew you growing up and have known you forever? As you um, it, it's funny to see because you got the mix of, I can't believe you grew up to be the chief here. And then the other ones that are like, we knew one day it would happen. And so that, that's been kind of the two reactions I get when they find out. And what's your favorite part of the job? I think my favorite part is um, when you're able to go in to a store or a restaurant and you see these people and they speak to you and having the experience as an SRO that I have, you know, you go in and then a kid comes up to you and, hey, how are you doing? We miss you at the school or something like that. Um, but being able to, it, it's community wide. So um, the the officers here are not just strictly they do only law enforcement um if you see a fire in town or ems go to a call in town more than likely if one of our officers are not on a call or something like that they're going to pull up they're going to try and help and see what they can do um and i've really enjoyed being able to see that that side of it what are the biggest challenges for being knowing everybody and being able to do sometimes it'll be like hey you know me is there something and it's like we're not going to treat you any different than if we just met you um I think a lot of times they try to play on that emotion. Well, I went by your house or I went by here and it's like, uh, that, that doesn't change anything. So I think that's probably the biggest there. What about just small town law enforcement? What are some of y'all's challenges? I would say the biggest challenges that we run into are when, when you're down here in a small town by yourself and you're handling different issues, you know, your, your closest assistance could be 20 minutes away. And I think it's an adjustment, especially when someone first comes here and they're used to maybe a bigger agency or you have multiple people here. Um, but I think a lot of a lot of uh, what we deal with ha has been been a good challenge, at, especially as we grow. You know, you're getting more calls, dealing with more people. Um, and, and I, I would say we're dealing with things that maybe in the years past we haven't dealt with. And so I would say that's probably been our biggest there. Your family's still here? Yes. Yeah, so I live here. Um, I live here in town. So I've grown up here and stayed here. And that's kind of where we are. Tell, so. people, tell people who don't know you, tell people a little bit about you. So I, I've grown up here my entire life. Um, my family lived here when I was little. We moved away for like one year. And I think everybody kind of missed it, so we came back. And then um, the only thing about growing up here, I did not go to school here. So I went to school in Anderson, uh, graduated from Oakwood Christian School, and then got involved with the fire department when I was young, became an explorer there. And, you know, Jimmy Ray that I talked about earlier and others were in the fire department that were part of law enforcement and just kind of helped grow that here. So um, that's pretty much what I do now, I'm from here, so I'm in the police department, fire department, all those things. When you have free time, what do you do with your free time? Uh, free time is short, um, but generally um, we'll be down at the fire department or, you know, just different things like that. Sometimes we'll get together, we'll, we'll go shoot basketball with a couple other guys or something like that, just try and unwind for a little bit. And what what's on your five-year, 10-year future plan for here? What would you like to see happen here? I would like to see us get self-sufficient with a lot of what we do. Um, and that that's already in the works. We're trying to get some of our people with different trainings and certifications um, so that we can become self-dependent in our training, whether it's our annual firearms and driving. Um, that and just growing and adapting um, as we grow, because you know, new challenges with more people things of that nature. Um, we have a very supportive council, which I'm very thankful for. They've been really good to us and continue to back us in what we need. And as you're growing, y'all do have good relationships with county law enforcement and work Absolutely. closely with them. Is that correct? Absolutely, we do. Um, 
all the deputies that work this area, they're able to come by here if they need to have somewhere to stop for a minute. We have their cell phone numbers, they have ours. Um, good working relationship. Generally, if we can, we'll try and grab a meal together throughout the week at some point. And I know you have to go to training and various things around the state. What do you tell people if they ask you about IVA that don't know anything about IVA? What would you tell them about IVA? Uh, when they ask about IVA, and then, or they ask where you're from, and then you tell them IVA, and they're like, where's that at? Well, then you'll have to, well, we're near Anderson. And then they'll be like, oh, that's the little town where you're not supposed to speed through. That's generally what we get. So that's, that's generally the, the funny, funny thing we get from people. And then they'll be like, oh, you're the town that has a real nice town square that's decorated in the holidays and stuff like that. And, and you could have gone anywhere or could have stayed in Anderson or anywhere else. Why, why did you choose to make your career here? I love this community. I, I love being here, um, growing up and knowing the people of the community and knowing that anytime I need something, um, when I was younger, my dad passed away. And when he passed, not even two hours after all that happened, uh, the rescue squad at the time, they come in with tons of bags of groceries and meals for our family. Um, the fire department was very supportive. The town was very supportive. And I didn't even work here at the time. And so um, I knew that if I ever plugged in somewhere, I'd want to be somewhere where I knew we want to make a difference, but we're also going to be a family. And so that's what I love about this town. I, we all work together well. Like I said, I worked for Judge Bannister, and then I worked under uh, Tim Taylor. And so now going to the top in this side, I've got that working relationship. And so I, I enjoy that part of it.